t-shirt from about 2005 and have that recreated for our team this year. It's so I cool. Mm -hmm. I'll see if I can find it. I'll show you guys here maybe at the end of the hour. Remind me. I know that there's a picture. Ruby had it down when we were in Daytona last year, so I'll, I'll pull that out. Okay. Well, that's okay. All right, guys. Uh, Section 4.3 is titled uh, Graphing uh, Radical Functions. And again, I'm going to make the note up here again. Uh, you're going to be using decimals for a lot of this, okay? But again, guys, the, the question becomes this, and, and, and I'm going to be quite honest with you. It says, how can you identify the domain and the range of a radical function, okay? Guys, domain represents X or Y values x values of a function, possible x values, and then the range is going to represent possible. Exactly. We've talked about this often this year. Okay. So the three goals we're trying to accomplish today, graph radical functions, that won't be an issue. Okay. Again, decimals will help us with that. This is the one that I'm really going to kind of focus on. I think that this is probably the big idea behind this whole section, but we're going to look at writing transformations of radical functions. Okay. And then we're going to graph parabolas and circles. And again, this would be something right here where Desmos is going to help you a lot. Okay. All right. So let's get rolling on vocabulary first. Okay. Guys, I think I've got a typo in here. Okay. This says rational function. I don't want to say that. I want this to say radical function. Okay. So write that down as radical function there in the vocabulary. You guys got that? Okay. Uh, definition. A radical function contains a radical expression with the independent variable in the radicand. When the radical is a square root, the function is called a square root function. When a radical is a cube root, the function is called a cube root function. Okay. Right down below here, this core concept. You see these two functions down here? Here and here. These are going to be the two parent functions that we deal with relative to radical functions. All right. So in this right here, again, uh, you're going to see some kind of a radical function. A square root function would be when your index is 2 and your x is up underneath the radical sign. Okay. We're also going to look at cube root functions. So the index would be 3 and your variable is in underneath the radical sign. Now, again, there might be something like maybe a 2x minus 6 here or something like this. But again, the idea is that your variable is where, kids? Outside the radical sign or underneath the radical sign? Underneath the radical sign, okay? Guys, I don't know if I really need to expound too much on transformations, but again, we've talked about this all year long. Basically, these are some types of movements, okay? These are movements, of parent functions. Okay. You're simply stretching or shrinking or sliding left or right or up or down. Or you might be flipping over an X axis or flipping over a Y axis. Okay. You remember all that type of stuff in all the previous chapters, kids? Mm -hmm. Again, you're moving stuff of parent functions all the time. Okay. Guys, a parabola. What shape is a parabola? Okay, parabolas come from the form f of x equals x squared. Okay, they're either typically a u shape or an arch shape. Okay, well, we're going to look at some inverses of that today, and I'll show you what that looks like here. It's pretty simple. Okay. And then circles, are, you know what a circle is, obviously, right? Okay, I'll do my best to draw a circle. Watch this. Pretty good? Okay. Parent function for this, f of x, is going to equal x minus h squared plus y minus k squared like this. I'm not going to get too worried about that because a lot of things that we're going to do are going to be done graphically. In that circle right there, kids, I'll say this. The point H comma K, that is your center. 
But again, I'm not going to worry about that too much because again, I really am just looking at transforming some things and I don't really know why they throw the parabolas and the circles in here. Um, but they do. Okay, as far as vocabulary is concerned, first things first. Do you have down everything there to begin with? Okay, let's try to make sense of this today, guys. The first thing that we're going to look at is the core concept here. And the core concept is titled Parent Functions for Square Root and Cube Root Functions. Guys, perfect squares. What's the square root of zero? Zero. Okay, so this is why they have this point right here, zero comma zero plotted right there. All right. Okay. What's the uh, square root of one? That's why that's plotted. What's the square root of four? That's why the y value of 2 is plotted. Now, I want you to understand this, okay? You guys remember talking in the past about a vertical line test? A function is a function if it passes a vertical line test, meaning if I draw a vertical line, the graph, this vertical line right here, could only hit my graph how many times to be a function? Well, one time, okay? So when we're doing square roots, f of x equals square root of x, you have to understand that this is equal to the <laughs> positive square root of x because keep in mind the square root of four could also be other than just positive two it could have been what else negative two down here like this right and then all of a sudden if i drew a vertical line there is that a function anymore well the answer is no because it would hit how many points two okay so we don't want that to happen so you have to be careful on this now if they want you to graph the negative square root guess what they're going to put out in front of the Square root sign then, if they want it to be the negative square root, they'll put a negative out there, okay? So this is what the graph is going to end up looking like. Beyond 4, the next perfect square is 9, because that square root is 3. Next perfect square after 9 is what? So that's why this is 4, okay? Uh, what x value would I have if I want a y value of 25 up here? I'm sorry, I just gave the answer away. Well, if I want a y value of 5 up here, 25. Okay, you guys don't even have to work hard if I'm going to screw up and give you the answers all the time, right? Okay. Okay. Hey, question. What's the square root of negative one? Can I take square roots of negative numbers? No, no. Imaginary. Okay, so let's go down here for this right here. This parent function for f of x equals the square root of x, it starts here, honestly, at 0, comma 0 right there. Okay, so one thing you might want to talk about or understand is this, the domain For the following function, f of x equals square root of x. For this particular parent function, it looks like the x value it starts with is what? Zero, and then it continues all the way to the right. So it's going to continue positively to the right. So I would say the domain for f of x equal root x would be all x values such that x, oh, I can't even spell this morning, kids. I probably cancel school today. Okay, so the domain for square root of x, parent function, kids, what is it? Going to be x greater than or equal to what? Zero. Okay. Talk to me about your range, kids. If x is covering horizontal values, then the range is covering what vertical values are covered. Well, isn't this going to continue to go uphill the further I go to the right? So I would say as x continues to increase to the right, y continues to increase. But guys, what y value did you start at again right here? And everything above that. So you would say the range is going to be all y values greater than or equal to what for that parent function? Zero. So you're kind of looking at this starting point. This starting point right here for square roots will, 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 will dictate where you're at. So guys, when we start transforming things left, right, up, down, doing some stretching or shrinking like that, in square roots right here, the note I'll make is for domain and range, look at 
your starting point. Okay, look at your starting point. Okay. Now, compared to compared to uh, cube roots of x here, guys, it's possible right here, like right here, I'm going to go here. See this x value of 8 right here? I'm sorry, negative 8. You see that x value of negative 8 that I just kind of circled there? Guys, what's the cube root of negative 8? It'd be negative 2, wouldn't it? Because negative 2 times negative 2 would be positive 4, wouldn't it? Times another negative 2 would make that negative 8. Okay, so for cube root functions here, guys, this is going to continue to move further to the right and further to the left, but as you move to the right, it's going to continue to move up, and as you move to the left, it's going to continue to move down. So, guys, the idea that um, I have arrows going onward in both directions right here and right here, what's that probably indicating about the domain for cube root of x? going all the way to the left and all the way to the right. Say it again. All real numbers. Okay, so it's going to be all real numbers. Okay, and then the range. You may want to guess the range on this. Again, it continues to move upward, upward, upward. The further right I go, the graph's going to continue to move upward. The further left I continue to go, it's going to continue to move downward. So what do you think about the range here? Okay, here's the deal. If you're dealing with some kind of a cube, uh, cubic function right here, I will tell you this right here. Your domain and range will always, always, always be that right there. Okay, that makes sense? All right, for square root functions, it's going to change depending upon where you are starting at. Okay. All right, so let's use this core concept right here to talk here a little bit, okay? You guys have that all down right there? Okay, let's look. Not going to get too excited about graphing because I know graphing is going to be done where, kids? Okay, now kids, what I want to tell you is this. Anytime you deal with a root, I'm going to write this up here. Note this right here. Anytime you're dealing with a root like this, and then whatever is underneath that radical sign, this is the same as, and, okay, that radical sign is kind of like containing parentheses in there, okay? So think about this. <laughs> it says, graph each function, identify the domain and range of each function. First of all, this, this goes all the way over here like so, okay? This is kind of like saying one-third times x in parentheses, all right? Now, uh, again, if we were talking about um, this function, the first thing I would ask myself is this. Is this a square root function or is this a cube root function? This is a square root function. So there's really an index of 2 up here, okay? All right. I look at this and I think, oh, there's a one-third times x in parentheses. And if you remember way back to stuff, a one-third times something in parentheses, that would be, I'm just going to make the note here. This would actually be a horizontal stretch. Horizontals are weird. What scale factor, friends? What's the reciprocal of one-third? It would be a horizontal stretch by three. Okay, now again, if we weren't sure, I'm going to run over here to decimals and say, all right, here it is. Okay, so square roots in this, my friends. Okay, what's the function again, kids? Square root of one-third x. So there's my square root sign right here. Okay. Guys, where's the start of this function at? Zero, zero. So it looks like the domain is going to be all x values greater than or equal to what? Domain is going to be all x values greater or equal to zero. And then what about your y values, kids, for range? All y values greater than or equal to what? 
Okay, so let's just jot that down here real quickly. So the domain in this, I'll just put a little D right here. Going to be all X values greater than or equal to zero. And then for your range, and I'm going to say that would have been all Y values greater than or equal to what? Okay, all right. Now, what did I tell you about cubic functions here, kids? Okay, it's going to be all reals both times, okay? And if you weren't sure, I could go plot this and graph this. And I think maybe I want to because I want you to make sure you understand where the cube root sign is. So I'm going to close this. I think cube root sign, my friends, kids, I think it's under this function sign. Okay, guys. If I want to get a cube root graph, when you go to functions, do you see this nth root button right here? Okay, that's the one you need to put in there. So you're going to type in that nth root button right there. Okay, so I'm going to click this. What root do I, or what index do I really want up there? Isn't it a three up there? Okay, what's out in front of this, by the way? Isn't there a negative two in there? Yeah. And then an X in here? Okay, here's your graph right here. Guys, that negative two out in front, Okay, first of all, I, I'm going to put the parent function in here as well, too. Okay, that negative sign flipped it over the x-axis. Okay, so if I put a negative sign out in front here, Lord, there's the flip of it. And then the two is going to stretch it vertically or pull points away from the x-axis. So if I put the two there, then it then it does that right there. Okay. But since this is a cubic root function, kids, what's true about domain and range? Okay. Now, when you're graphing these to get an idea, do you understand how to get that three for an index now? You have to hit the functions button up here and then scroll all the way to the bottom. And that's the nth root one, and you'll just plug that in there, okay? All right, so let's write this down. So by decimals right here, the domain was, is it okay if I just write ARN, is that okay? Darn. <laughs> All right, never mind. You guys hear why the nope. chicken wanted to cross the road? <laughs> I heard this the other night. I thought it was pretty good. Because! I just said that. <laughs> Did you? You were ahead of me. I didn't hear you. You got to speak up. I'm yeah, going down. Was it? Sophia told, <laughs> yeah, Sophia, told Sophia told me the other night and I laughed. What was the other one? Were you sitting there when uh, there was another one there was Hubbard another was there? Was. I can't remember what he said. I can't remember what he said. It was pretty funny, though. All right. Well, let's go on rolling here, guys. Let's talk about this right here. It says describing transformations, and I think we should be very good at this, all right? We've done a lot of this this year. Okay. Uh, example two, transforming radical functions. It says describe the function or the transformation of F represented by G, then graph the function. Again, graphing, I'm not going to get too excited about because we're going to probably roll where with it. Okay, first things first. What's your parent function in part A here? Square root of x, okay? Now keep in mind, anything underneath a radical sign, that's really something that's happening in what? Parentheses. So what you may want to write down here is this. You see that's where we're going to. G, the x minus 2. What's the minus 2 in parentheses going to do to your parent function? Help me remember. Going to go right to you, and it's that minus two is going to shift everything right <gasps> two units. Okay, now my friends, talk to me now. What's that minus three going to do? That's not underneath the radical sign, so it's really outside of parentheses. So what's happening there? Down. Okay. If you weren't sure on this, could you graph the parent function? 
And if you weren't sure about, well, maybe my movements are wrong, could I graph the new function or the transform function, if you will? Okay, let's just do that real quickly, kids. So I'm going to run over here. All right, so what do we have? The original was square root of x, right? Okay, next one. Uh, what was it then? Square root of x minus 2. And then to get outside of parentheses, I need to arrow out to the right, minus 3. Okay, you guys tell me, but this point right down here, from where it was originally at 0, 0, didn't that move right 2 and down 3 to get there? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're right, aren't we? Okay, by the way, if I was talking about this right here then, if I would plot that point, okay, what's your new domain now? Okay, what x values are covered here? What's the x value to that point? So the x values would be x greater than or equal to what then? 2. And then the range would be y values greater than or equal to negative 3, wouldn't it? Okay, so for those, you're always looking at that starting point. Okay, so that was pretty easy, wasn't it, friends? Yeah. Hey, let's take a look at our next one. You talked to me about it. Okay, I like this one right here. What's our parent function, friends? 3 squared x. So let me graph that right there. There's the parent function, okay? Um, let's see what you remember. Okay, I've got a 3 right here. That's the same as a 3 here, and I've got the x right here. That's the same as the x underneath the radical. So it looks like we have to work with that negative out front. What's the negative going to do, kids? Say it one more. I, what it, Negative out front would take it and over which axis. And again, if you weren't sure, let's just do that. Let's put a negative right out front of this 3 because we have to do that. Did it flip it over the x-axis? It did, didn't it? Okay, there it is. All right. So there's that. So the first thing we know is that it flips over the... Oh, shoot. It's going to flip over the x-axis, right? Okay, this is your test. Okay, and what made it flip over the x-axis, kids? Negative. The negative sign did. Okay, this is your test right here. There's a 2 in here. Okay, that's actually happening in parentheses. So it's like multiplication by 2 inside of parentheses. Anything that happens in parentheses, parentheses are always to the left and right, aren't they? So it's got to be some kind of a horizontal thing. This is going to be a horizontal. Is it going to be a slide or is it going to be like a shrink or stretch since it's multiplication? We're not adding or subtracting like we were over here with the minus 2 to slide right or slide left. So this has to be a shrink or a stretch, doesn't it? Remember, horizontals are weird. Just like over here, the minus 2, you would think left 2, but it actually went what direction? Okay, so is this positive 2 going to be a horizontal stretch or horizontal shrink? It's a horizontal shrink. Anybody know what scale factor? Did I hear one half? Okay, a horizontal shrink then means it's going to push my points to be closer. Oh, what's going on now? To be closer to the y-axis. So let's see if that happens. Cumin. Okay. So I just take a look at this point. Maybe like right here. Isn't this point right here about... Five, negative 6.78. Remember that point. Five, negative 6.78. What's half a negative 6.7 about? Negative 3.4-ish. So if I put a 2 in here, okay, guys, if, watch what I do here. I'm going to back up on this again. Move my graph up a little bit. Okay, um, let me get rid of that 2 again. There's, there's, there it is. Guys, if I put a 2 in there, we think it's a horizontal shrink, meaning the, the distance from the y-axis here over to the graph, the distance from, let's just say, from here to here.
here, that distance should do what? That horizontal distance from the y-axis to that point should be cut in what? Half. So go from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven units over eight here. If I go down eight over seven, this should be over down eight and over about three and a half. So let's see if that gets closer to the y-axis when I put that two in there. Does it happen? Yeah. It did, didn't it? Okay. All right. Very good. So that idea of describing transformations, are you okay here? We've done this a million times relative to other functions. We're doing the same thing. We're just applying it to cube root functions and square root functions. Got to keep in mind anything under the radical sign is like something that's happening inside of what? Parentheses, right? Okay. All right. Let's get through example three here. And then the rest is pretty simple. Okay. You guys with me so far? All right. Questions to this point. I'm going to volunteer to read example three for me. It says the function e of d equals 0.25 times the square root of d approximates the number of seconds it takes a dropped object to fall d feet on earth d feet <laughs> the function s of d equal 4.4 times e of d approximates the number of seconds it takes a dropped object to fall d feet on saturn it says write a rule for s how long does it take a dropped object to fall 15 feet on saturn okay all right so it said s of d was equal to what kids Guys, but the function e of d is defined as what? Okay, so wouldn't this then equal 4.4 .4 times what? All agree with that? Okay. All right. So, could I take 4.4 .4 times 0.25? Yeah, it'd be 1.1, wouldn't it? Okay, 0.25 times 4.4 .4 is 1.1. So, we have S of D right here, kids. Four point four. I'm sorry, I've got that messed up. It should be 1.1 times the square root of D, right? Okay, so the question becomes this. Let's see. So D is the number of feet, right? It says, how long does it take a dropped object to fall 15 feet on Saturn? Okay. So what are you going to plug in for D? Okay, 15 feet in the air. That's like... Uh, Oh boy, this ceiling this ceiling eight feet or nine feet, you think? I think it's only eight feet. So like think of almost twice as so you're up in the air twice as high as this room is right now, okay? If you fell on Saturn from fifty well, let's just say this. If you fell from twice the height here, would that hurt when you hit the ground here on Earth? Yes, it would. Okay. Now on Saturn. Um, you know, this is an interesting um, problem. Okay, somebody takes, well, I guess I could do it right here. I'm going to go square root of 15 times what, kids? Took square root of 15 and now times that by what? Okay, it would actually take you almost four and a half seconds, close to four and a half seconds to hit the ground. So if you were falling, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. So from like two times this height right here, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, now you're on the ground. So, well, I don't know. Are you falling fast or pretty slow on Saturn? I don't know. Okay. All right. Pretty slow, okay, because on Earth, well, let's just do this, okay? 
this would take about what what was the number there again guys i think it was about 4.2 seconds okay do this for me on earth who's got the so who's got a calculator I'll, I'll do it here if i took the square root of 15 here on earth and then times that by 0.25 it would take about one second to hit the ground so you're about About four times slower, 4.4 .4 times slower. If I was going to fall, would you rather fall on Earth or would you rather fall on Saturn? Gravity. Okay. I would rather fall on Earth because you probably can't breathe on Saturn. Well, I would just rather not fall at all. <laughs> Me too, but I'm pretty clumsy. Okay. All right. You guys have what you need there? All right. Again, simple transformations. That one there was simply a, a vertical stretch of 4.4. Page three is really the page I'm kind of looking at example four that I think is the big idea behind everything. Okay. Molly, let me know when you got her, bud. Good? Everybody else good? Let's roll last the page. We might get a set of notes done in one hour today. Wouldn't that be cool? I love example four. This is the one I really think we need to pay attention to. So this is an important one. Let the graph of G be a horizontal stretch by what, kids? Three. Scale factor of three. So I'm going to underline a horizontal stretch. Followed by what? Okay. Write a rule for G. Okay, my friends, this is kind of a crazy one. Okay. What's the parent function? Okay, now we've talked about these transformations when they describe them, but you've got to make sure you write the transformation within the function in the order that they talk about them within the description. So the first thing they're telling us to do, guys, is what? Okay, horizontal stretch. Will that be multiplication or uh, will that be addition or subtraction first? Multiplication. Okay, so this is going to become the following, my friends. This is going to be... Let's do the step one first. This is going to be three. Okay. Horizontals are weird. The fact that this is going to happen in parentheses with multiplication by a scale factor of three. Do I want to put three X underneath there or something else? Horizontal stretch. Horizontals are weird, my friends. It would be what again? One third X like this. Okay. This part, my friends, is your horizontal stretch part first. Now, my friends, we're going to go right how much? Okay. The second part of that is this, is to replace this X in parentheses with X plus six or minus six. Because we're going to the right. So this is going to become the following in the end, kids. It's going to become three. Then in parentheses, one third. Then in parentheses again, x minus what? Okay. Now you could leave it like that. Some people might choose to call this in the end three times the square root of. Some people might distribute here. They might call it one third x. What's a third of six, kids? Minus two. I actually prefer this method right here because, guys, when I have the one third underneath the radical, knowing that the radical is like parentheses right here, can I see that that's going to be a horizontal right there in parentheses? Again, anything under the radical sign is like it's happening where again, kids? In parentheses, okay? Okay, so that's that first part. You understand that this is the horizontal stretch, and then do you understand the x minus 6 down here moving 6 units to the left, right, okay? And again, guys, if I wasn't sure, 
Couldn't I put this function in and then put the 130 in and see if that first of all is that horizontal stretch? And then could I put x minus 6 in there then to see if it takes that whole function and shifts it to the right? You could, okay? And again, I'm not going to get too fired up about that because we've done that a lot, okay? All right, guess what examples 5 and example 6 are going to be done with? Decimals, okay? Very quickly, decimals here. Very quickly, decimals here. Okay. Just going to graph these. They're going to get you some parabolas. It says identify the vertex and the direction the parabola opens. Okay. We're graphing some parabolas in some different forms. Guys, what do they have there? What's that example five say? Negative one over five. Negative one fifth. Okay, now we're used to having parabolas. Oh my. We're used to having parabolas either be a U shape or an arch shape, but this time they kind of go sideways, don't they? And the reason we're used to having U shapes is we're, we're usually of the form Y equals X squared. This time we're of the form X equals Y squared. Well, my friends, the vertex is right here. Where is the vertex on this? Zero, zero. And then is this open to the left or open to the right? What, which way? Does it graph to the left or graph to the right? Left, okay. So simply put, just graphing these, it's very easy, okay. So you would say that the vertex was where by decimals? Yep. Because we had a graph that looked like this when we were done. Okay, and went through like this. Okay, there was the vertex right there. Okay, and then open what direction? I'll agree, open left. How do you feel about that? Okay, next one. This time we're going to get a graph of what? X squared plus Y squared is what? Okay. Identify the center, radius, and the intercepts. No problem. Miss Carrie, did you guys use decimals when you were in high school? No. That's unfortunate. Really? What's the center appear to be here, guys? Yeah. And then what's the radius going to be then? Seven. And then when I talk intercepts, we're talking x-intercepts and what else? Y-intercepts. Okay, so in this one right here, when we graph it, essentially what we end up with here, friends, I'll do my best to draw this. I'm missing out on some good stuff here, and I don't even know what I'm missing out on. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work very well. Yeah, you guys get the idea here, I think. Okay, so the center was at zero, zero. This point was seven comma zero, zero comma seven, negative seven comma zero, and zero comma negative seven. Okay, so the x-intercepts would have been at 7, 0, 
and negative 7 comma 0. What's that make your y-intercepts then, kids? Zero, 07 and what else? Okay, and then talk to me about the radius of this. What would the radius from center out be? 7. Okay. Guys, talk to me a little easier than the last section. Okay. So we're kind of back to some uh, more normal things here, which is good for us, I think. So, all right. Let's do this then. I'm going to go ahead and stop this here.